Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you have given to each one of us this morning to worship you. Lord, we have worshipped you with uh, reading of your word. We have worshipped you with singing. And Lord, at this time we want to worship you by listening to your voice. Lord, help us to understand the word that has been read to us. Lord, help us to accept and apply what you want to speak to us this morning in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Greetings to all of you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So wonderful to see uh, all of you this morning. So many known faces and uh, uh, it's good to be back after a long time. I thank God for this privilege of sharing from his word and also the church leadership for giving me this opportunity to share from God's word. A story is told of a couple who had been married for 20 years and it so happened that both of them went to attend the wedding of the husband's close friend's daughter. And suddenly, during the ring exchange ceremony, the husband started to cry. And the wife was really taken by surprise by her husband's emotional outburst and said, I never knew that you would be moved so much by your friend's happiness. The husband replied, actually it's not like that. I remember that 20 years ago, your father threatened that if I don't marry you, he would put me behind bars for 20 years. I just realized that if I had not, if I had gone to jail instead of marrying you, I wouldn't be a free, I, I would have been a free man by now. In fact, only yesterday I was reading a news and sharing it with my wife about a tech professional from Bangalore. It's a real story uh, who was missing for 10 days. I, I think some of you may have read that. And finally he was found in a mall in Noida. And uh, he was actually not missing. He said that he had ran away from his wife and refused to go back to her saying that she curtails his freedom and doesn't even allow him to go and enjoy tea alone. Amazing, isn't it? Everyone wants freedom. And in fact, freedom has been compelling since the beginning of time. You know, if you uh, look at the book of Genesis, you'd see that people of God were being oppressed and abused by the Egyptians. In fact, uh, the whole book of Exodus is about God's people going away from a life of slavery and bondage. They were throwing off the chains of tyranny and oppression. In fact, we are no different. You know, as humans, it is our desire to be free. And uh, we also, you know, love freedom. And that is why uh, it is so good uh, to watch stories of freedom. And no wonder that movies like Border and Lagan and So This were such big hits. But this type of fondness is not just for movies or good stories. Some of our most outstanding moments in our history are stories from the freedom struggle. In fact, one of the most famous quotations uh, of our history is uh, given by Netaji Subhash Bose, who said that, give me blood and I will give you freedom. <coughs> but friends, while we enjoy political freedom, let's look at a different kind of freedom today. And this freedom goes a step beyond. You know, we just read Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 10 this morning, where Paul is talking about freedom. And here, he's talking about spiritual freedom. And this spiritual freedom, we, we may have come across this term many times. This may sound very abstract. This may sound uh, like a mystery to many of us. But the Bible reminds us the reality of the spiritual world. You know, friends, one day we all are going to die and fade away into dust. And maybe then, maybe then, 
we will be able to realize the full reality of the spiritual world. So although political freedom is a great thing, if we were captured tomorrow and forced to live the rest of our lives as slaves, which could be unthinkable today, we still could know the reality of a spiritual freedom in Christ. You know, the first thing that we get in the spiritual freedom in Christ is freedom from sin. You know, I had read a story in my childhood, uh, maybe some of you may have read the story, uh, childhood about the Zulu tribe in Africa who trap animals. And this story is taken from Jungle Doctor's Tales. Um, in Odia it is called Jongala Daktaranko Kahani. And uh, one of the hardest animals to catch for the Zulu tribe was the monkey. And for the Zulus in Africa, it was very simple for them. Because even though the monkeys are very intelligent and agile, they have been catching these monkeys for years. And the method that they use is unique. You know, it is based on the way that the monkeys behave. So what they do is, uh, they take a small tin box, fill it up with uh, peanuts, and then they keep it outside. They cut a hole in the tin box, just large enough for the monkey to insert his hand and reach the peanuts inside. So what the monkey does, the monkey will stick his hand in, grab as many peanuts as he can, and then he would start to withdraw it. But by now, he just can't do it, because with the peanuts in his hand, his fist is larger than the hole. The monkey will pull and tug, it will screech and fight for hours and hours, but he just won't get free of the trap. The only thing the monkey has to do is to give up the peanuts so that he could easily remove his hand. But he would never do that. He would never do that. And then, while the monkey is still struggling, the Zulus would sneak up and catch the monkey very easily. You know, friends, that's exactly what sin is like. It's like something that we don't want to let go of. But in order to find freedom, we have to let go and reach out for Jesus. If we don't, then before we know it, Satan will capture us and put all of us in his cage. But for some of us, that may not be the issue. The issue could be entirely different. The issue could be that we either do nothing about spiritual freedom or we do not really care about it. In the year 1863, slavery was abolished in America. The news spread throughout the country. The headlines read, slavery legally abolished. However, majority of the slaves which lived in the southern part of the country went on living as though slavery still exists. They went on living like they had never been set free. In fact, when one slave was asked what he thought of the new law which abolished slavery, you know what he said? He said, I don't know much about Abraham Lincoln except that he set us free and I don't know anything about freedom either. How tragic is that? The war was fought, the document was signed, the slaves were legally free, but most of them in that part of the country continue to live as slaves. You know, they had chosen to remain slaves, though they were legally free. You know, even though they were set free, they kept serving the same master. How many times has that happened to our lives? How many times Jesus has set us free, but we have decided to stay locked up in our sinful prison of pride? There could be many sins that still hold us, pull us down, caged us. We have been set free, but we chose to ignore freedom 
and live as slaves of sin. You know, there could be many reasons why we still live in captivity. Even the Israelites, when they were wandering through the desert said, oh, we wish we could go back to being slaves. How amazing is that? Just a small problem and they all wanted to go back to their slavery days. But this attitude didn't please God. It didn't please Moses either. But why do people choose slavery over freedom and hope? I think the primary reason is fear. Fear of the future, fear of uncertainty. You know, the Israelites said, hey, we are going to die out there. At least back in Egypt, we were fed. Which, in other words, would be, we know that things were not perfect in Egypt. Uh, we were under oppression. Life was difficult. But at least we got two square meals a day. But today, we don't know what lies in our future. Some of us won't take our hand out of the tin box just because we are comfortable. And let's be honest, when we give our life to God, we most certainly will wonder about future. We don't know what lies in future. But then our dependence should be on God. Actually, our independence is independence. Our independence is in dependence on God. That's the magic of Jesus. You know, the great news is that Jesus is the one who leads us through the deserts of despair. He is the one who helps us climb the mountain of uncertainty. He is the one who makes us look out at a land that he wants to take us into. A place flowing with rich friendships, fellowship and community that keeps on encouraging one another. It is a land that could be unfamiliar to many of us. It could contain huge obstacles, but the promise of God is this. It's more rewarding than anything that you have ever experienced in your life. You know, if a bird will be afraid to flap its wings, it will never be able to fly. If a baby will be afraid to take the first step, he will never be able to walk. What God wants to know from you is, when will you trust him with your future? When will you trust him with your future? The second thing that we get in the spiritual freedom in Christ is freedom from law. You know, we are not just set free from the sin, but we are also set free from the law. Look at how the biblical law is described. Uh, the passage that was read to us, Romans chapter 8, I'm just going to read verses 3 and 4 to you. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature but according to the spirit. You know this passage calls the law powerless and weak. The law still stood in, a, uh, in, the, in, in the way of a relationship between us and Jesus. And what happened? In all of history not a single person could keep the whole law except Jesus Christ. That's where the relationship starts. Because without Jesus, we all have broken the commandments of God. Only in Jesus, the commandments, the law was fulfilled. It was kept. He's the only one who fulfilled the law. He's the one who kept the law. And because he did, because of his great love for his people, because of the fact that he sacrificed his life, we are able to make him the Lord of our lives. You know, the early church actually went through this issue. And some Christians and some of the churches also struggle with this today. The issue for a lot of churches today is that if Jesus fulfilled the law, how should we live? 
if Jesus has completed the law, what do we do with the first two thirds of the Bible? Are they still relevant, the Old Testament? Now the answer to both these questions is this, look for Jesus. Look for Jesus. The Old Testament is designed to show us the whole plan of God for humanity. So, so we need to cherish the history, we need to learn from the history, we we'll need to learn from the lessons of the heroes of faith and then look for Jesus in every book. Look for Jesus in each and every book of the Bible in the Old Testament. You know, a very popular songwriter talks about how Jesus can be found in every book of the Bible and how we should try to find him in the Old Testament. Verse 3 and 4 of this text say the law was powerless but now we have an opportunity to live according to the spirit. Now again, as I was telling you, this is quite abstract. What does this mean practically? When we say that we have to live by the spirit, it basically means that we have to look to Jesus. As Paul writes that we are no longer bound by the law, but we are bound by the relationship we have with Jesus. And in effect, that's what Jesus wanted to do. So, he made the rigid law of Exodus really practical for us. He made it a standard for our relationships. For example, he said that the law says don't commit adultery. That's the law. But if you live by the Spirit, now give your attention, if you live by the Spirit, it's about the relationship that you have with God. So, as a part of honoring that relationship with God, you don't even look at a woman with lust. Jesus is extending that. This is exactly what living by the Spirit means. Similarly, the law says that do not murder. That's the law. But if you live by the Spirit, it's about the relationship that you have with God. And so as a part of honoring God with that relationship, don't even cause hurt to others. Don't even use the word hate towards others. You know, friends, we have been set free by the, uh, from, the, from the law. But if you, uh, if you ask me, we are held to a higher point of accountability. The law was there, but now it is even higher because of our relationship with Jesus. And the third and the last thing that I want to share with you this morning is the spiritual freedom in Christ also gives us freedom from death. You know, Woody Allen had once said, I don't want to achieve immortality through my work. I want to achieve immortality by not dying. How sad that he died. Similarly, Nietzsche, one of the philosophers, he said, he once said that God is dead. God remains dead. You know, one day God said, Nietzsche is dead. Nietzsche remains dead. The reality is that we all will one day pass from this life to the next life. It's not a pleasant feeling, uh, um, you know, talking about death in the, uh, you know, in, the, in the morning. And nobody likes to talk about it actually. But the truth is that the committed follower of Jesus knows what lies beyond the other side of the grave. Either way, we will experience an incredible spiritual reality check whether you are on this side or on that side, on the, on the side of Jesus or not on the side of Jesus, there will be a spiritual reality check after we die. For the follower of Jesus, the Bible promises that we will share eternity with Jesus if we are willing to accept him in our lives and live a life true of his calling. Jesus sets us free from everything in our lives that keeps us away from God. And if you want to be free from death, we have to look to Jesus. We have to look to Jesus. 
But you know what? Many of us have already been imprisoned by death. Many of us, you know, including me, could be standing at the doorway of the next life. Nobody knows. Please don't get me wrong. Many of us may live for another 50, 60 or 70 years or even more. But many of us could also be chained to the fear of death in our lives. Sometimes the fear of death could be bigger than death itself. If we are uncertain about our eternal destiny, Jesus wants to set you free this morning as well. Begin the relationship with Jesus today. Identify with Christ. Confess your sins and accept him in your life. Allow him to secure your future. There is incredible comfort in Jesus. The promise that Jesus makes to us is this. If we stand up and proclaim him as savior of our life, as the Lord of our life, he has promised that he will also claim us before God, his father and our father, whoever accepts him. I don't know whether you are, uh, where you are actually in a life journey, but I can assure you that God knows and he is waiting for you. There is no reason for anyone to live a life of slavery, a life of fear, a life chained to sin, a life where you think that your life is bound. If you are living with no hope, Jesus can give you hope. Jesus is asking you, will you live in freedom, real freedom, begins with Jesus. May God bless us.